Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's do our third evaluation of a line integral. In this case, our differential is going to be the derivative of the position vector r. Now, the position vector r here is defined as xi plus yj plus zk. If we then replace x and y and z in terms of what they're equal to in terms of the parametric equations of the variable t, which is the def definition of the path we're going to integrate over, this then becomes at in the i direction, a over t in the j direction, plus b times k. Uh, that's in the k direction. b is a constant as well as a. And then we need to find the derivative of that, or the differential, because after all, we need to find the dr. So we take the derivative with respect to t. This becomes a. This becomes minus a over t squared. And this becomes 0, because b is a constant. Now we can go ahead and plug those into our integral right here. So this becomes equal to the integral. And since it's going to be the variable t, we're going to integrate from 1 to 2. Those are the limits of integration. So the vector field here in terms of the parametric equations is going to be a times t in the oh, times y squared, which is a squared over t squared in the i direction, plus 2 in the j direction, plus x, which is equal to a times t in the k direction, like so. And then we're going to do the dot product with the dr, and dr is going to be defined as a in the i direction minus a over t squared in the j direction, and the k direction is 0 times dt. And so now we have a dot product, so we're going to multiply the i components, the j components, and the k components together. So this becomes equal to the integral from 1 to 2. So we have an a cubed times a, which is a to the fourth, divided by well, we have a t to the first power here. And that would be in the i direction. In the j direction, we end up with a minus 2a over t squared. That would be, oh, and we can't write i direction because when we do a dot product, the vector components disappear. They drop off. And then we have a zero component for the k multiplication and this whole thing times dt. Let's see if that's correct here. So we have a to the fourth over t, and we have a 2 times a minus a over t squared. Now we're ready to integrate that, and we get the following. This is equal to a to the fourth divided by t. That gives us a to the fourth times the natural log of t. And then minus 2a, that's t to the minus 2. Add 1 to the exponent, that's t to the minus 1. So we get 2a divided by t and divide by minus 1. So multiply that times the minus, that becomes a plus. And we evaluate this from, zero, from 1 to 2. Plug in the upper limit, we get a to the fourth times the natural log of 2 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, the natural log of 1. And then here, plus 2a times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over 2 and we plug in the lower limit, we get 1 over 1. And this is equal to, now the natural log of 1 is equal to 0, so this becomes a to the fourth times the natural log of 2, and here we have a minus 1 plus a half, that's minus a half times 2, that becomes minus 1 times a, and this here is the evaluation of that line integral. Notice we get a very different answer. In the previous two, we end up with a vector quantity as a result, as an evaluation of the line integral. But in this case, we end up with a scalar answer because we have a dot product which causes the vector components to disappear. And you end up with this as an answer of the line integral. And that's how it's done.